So the Ethereum London hard fork is here and we've seen some crazy jumps in Ethereum. In this video, we're gonna talk about what exactly has happened, what is the Ethereum hard fork and what you can expect to, as an investor. Stick around to find out. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Chase and this is a Penny Pinchers guide to personal finance and investing. And today, we're gonna go over Ethereum. But before we jump into the video, go ahead, you know what to do, hit that like button and smash that subscribe button because it really doesn't make a big difference to our channel and it's free to you and it's really quick. So without any more time spent on that, let's jump right into the video. So taking a look at what's been going on with the Ethereum price over the past week. Um, we saw a pretty big jump. Uh, if we go back to the month chart, we're all the way down back to the to mid July was around $1,700, $1,800. And it's steadily grown up with anticipation of this London hard fork kind of moving forward, which it, rightly so because of what's happening during this fork, this part where it is bridging between the Ethereum 1.0 and Ethereum 2.0. As of the time of this video, it is around $3,134, which is pretty great. A little disclaimer at the beginning of this video is that I do own some Ethereum. I own about two coins, so nothing crazy out there, not a will by no means. Um, so if you go out there thinking that I have some skin in the game for pushing this, um, I'm not gonna make much money off of two coins of Ethereum. But just so you know, I have it, and uh, so we'll jump right into the video. Um, so overall, it's pretty good um, change into the price with the uh, happening of the London hard fork. Th this is a significant upgrade. So that is true that there is a significant upgrade with this. And it's making a big difference because if anybody has been trading with Ethereum uh, over the past couple months, they have been seeing the huge spike in the gas fees that come along with it. What do I mean by gas fees? Uh, for those that don't really know this crypto language, it's the fee associated with doing a transaction in Ethereum. Um, and so whether that's just sending Ethereum from one wallet to another wallet, making a transaction with an NFT or sending NFTs between different people, there is a fee that is paid out in Ethereum that allows that transaction to be accomplished. And that fee is paid out to the crypto miners during the proof of work uh, protocol with Ethereum. And that's really where we're at right now. When With the London hard fork, we are transitioning and making a bridge between Ethereum 1.0 to 2.0, where we're going to move from the proof of work to the proof of stake concept. And that's really what they're trying to do uh, moving forward with that. Um, and so the Ethereum uh, London hard fork, uh, really what it did is it took away this, this giant fee structure of where you have to be the highest bidder to get the fastest uh, transaction to occur. And kind of a way to think of this is that you have this bus system and every 10 to 15 seconds, because that's how long it takes to uh, for a node to be built in Ethereum, every 10 to 15 seconds a bus shows up and it gets filled and then it moves on. And then 10 to 15 seconds later, a bus shows up again. And so basically what has happened is you have to pay a fee to get onto this bus and the fee goes up and up and up and the highest person with the highest price that they want to pay to get on that bus is gonna get on that bus faster until it fills up and they have to wait in line. And until eventually you're gonna get on with the fee that you have placed because there's nobody else higher than you at that point. And so what's been going on with that is that they're planning on making a change. They're, they're implementing the EIP 1559, which is the Ethereum improvement protocol, which aims to change the way the fees or the gas fees are estimated. So um, this is kind of basically saying right now that they, you know, they must bid how much they're willing to pay to have their uh, Ether transaction picked up, um, which is kind of how we're following with that bus protocol. And what, what's gonna actually happen is that they're gonna make a more flat fee that's adjusted by the algorithm uh, that they have made for that particular period of time so that everybody has the same fee and it will not cause transactions to be any slower or faster. And so what the hope of this um, is that this new fee is gonna be burnt. And so that fee that is paid is no longer being gonna be paid to the miners, but it's actually going to end up being burnt and get out of circulation and with a hope of making this a little bit more of a deflationary cryptocurrency. 
So if you really work the numbers, it really doesn't make it exactly deflationary right now at the amount that uh, Ethereum is being made and at the rate that it is burned, it is not enough to where it offsets it to make it completely deflationary. It still fits in that inflationary um, definition. It inflates about a 2.3% right now. Now the hope is that with these new changes in Ethereum, that it will move into this deflationary uh, rate where it will be burning more because there will be more transactions than there are Ethereum being made. And so that point would make it deflationary and therefore for investors, it would make a, a more desirable investment because at that point it would be more scarce and would be driving the price up. And that's pretty interesting. And that's, that's what they're kind of moving towards right now. Um, up until they get to the proof of stake and at that point that can make a bigger difference but many of these expectations are likely to be optimistic in the short term so um so they look great now um and will become to be uh will become more material uh in the long term so over a long period of time we are expecting that this hard fork that this um change in the uh, deflationary rate and that the uh, burning of the coin will make a big difference and in the long term will increase the price of ethereum and you know the the nominal amount of gas burn won't outpace the network inflation basically so overall they're pretty optimistic uh short term and long term that this is going to be working out good for them so we'll talk a little bit more about what fixing the ethereum fee market is going to happen um you can take a look right here we'll just scroll down to get the more idea of what's going on but one possible improvement of this system is to modify the auction me mechanism just slightly so that the users submit bids as normal then everyone pays only the lowest bid that was included in the block um, so while this first reduces the uh, inefficiencies of the actual market um, it can easily be gained by miners who will fill up their own blocks in order to increase the minimum fee and it's also gameable by the transaction centers who collude the miners so um, it de definitely doesn't have its um, ups and downs associated with it but in summary what we want to look at is that you know this upgrade to the fee system would provide um, multiple different benefits that come along with the Ethereum and allows it to be a little bit more diverse to its users, um, saving up to 90% of the transaction costs. Um, it would greatly improve user experience by automizing the fee bidding system. So then you can more predict what you would be paying. So then you won't have to worry about how much it's going to be changing in the long run, and you can make a more automated system for transactions. And it you know it makes it more predictable. So. Overall, this, this new um, Ethereum improvement protocol is going to be a great improvement for um, everything going on. So that's kind of the basis of what's going on with EIP-1552 and what you expect. Overall, what's happening is that this is bridging the gap between Ethereum 1.0 and 2.0 that will be coming in the next year or so and how it is going to be making the fee structure more uh, predictable and making it more of an investment uh, that investors will want to look into because they want to buy into these more deflationary currencies um, or assets that they can expect to go up in time because the scarcity will uh, increase and then therefore the price will increase as well. So we saw about a 30% increase in Ethereum and it's expected that when we get to the Ethereum 2.0 that it would be reasonable to get at least 30% increase as well uh, due to the scarcity that we'll be building as well as um, some people are saying that it can go up to 90% increase from where we are right now at that point. That being said, with Ethereum, there's a typical um, point of FOMO where people will start to buy in, buy in, buy in, and then we start to see a drop off um, and a sell off. And that's very typical until we see it pop back up again. Uh, you see this time and time again with multiple different cryptocurrencies and in the end it's the people that hold on for the long term are the ones that you see are making the most profit and i think ethereum just like bitcoin has been around been around so long and so many different protocols use ethereum that it's not going away so as we see this this fomo where people are buying in buying in buying in i think we will see a little bit of a dip but in the long run down months down the road we're going to see a far greater price than what we see today. And especially as we get closer to Ethereum 2.0, it's gonna to continue to go up. So with that being said, if you got some good information from this video, go ahead and that like and subscribe button, smash it right now. It's free to you and it makes a big difference to us. And as always, I wanna remind you to pinch a little bit.